the sexual experience is something which is happening at a very material level in the system and it is there to give meaning to the possibility of communication with the male because the male and the female are are just that different that they don't understand each other at all the male and female orgasm is also a sign to the human being about what actually is possible when the consciousness expands beyond the 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 emotional which is where the entire sexual activity happens there's no such thing as tantric sexuality that's ridiculous What is the what is the role of female uh, sexual experience in bringing one closer to to their primal essence and connection to oneself and with the other also when you talk about the primal self it just sounds very nice in a book like it has this deep meaning the female is now making the way to her primal self and it's fine it's 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 literature but the actual experience in the body whether it's for a male or a female is of a concurrent primalness with the so called more conceptual humanness it's all concurrent because that that which you call the primal whether it's a female or a male is actually a connection to the plant animal that is genetically part of this being we even have a, a kriya called what's it called that kriya I've given it different names i keep changing the names the one where you you know you move through your entire like you move from stone to tree to evolutionary awakening kriya is what i call it it's amazing because when you do that kriya you you can experience within yourself the materiality of the mineral base of this body and then you can feel the plants and then you can feel the animal because that's your genetic inheritance so that primalness you speak about is actually a connect with what is in you and which doesn't need to be connected in any way with your sexuality or your sexual experience the sexual experience is something which is happening at a very material level in the system and it is there to give meaning to the possibility of communication with the male because the male and the female are are just that different that they don't understand each other at all there's basically like a big wall between the male and the female they just do not understand each other and because they don't understand each other they need to have a means of communication that is devoid of a conceptual of conceptual activity and that is the way they communicate which also results in procreation so to make that whole thing more palatable you do have the male and female orgasm also a sign to the human being about what actually is possible when the consciousness expands beyond the 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 emotional which is where the entire sexual activity happens in the second chakra and it's a sign it's like to say this is how it is but a million times over when you expand upward from the emotional swadishtana area of the system beyond it beyond it beyond it beyond it beyond it till you go into union anahata where you are one with the other and that experience it's an expression a million times more powerful than what you experience in the emotional part of the being the swadishtana area it's giving you a a glimpse into what is possible in the human system most people stay stuck there they don't go further they don't expand further
So that primal part of your being is actually your, your, the plant animal which is part of the cells of your body, the genetic memory. And you don't have to go there because you're a human now. Your material body is an expression of your mineral past. Your emotional body is an expression of your plant animal past. Your conceptual body is, which is your mind, your thinking, is an expression of your human present. Your transformative or creative body, which corresponds with the chakra above that, is an expression of your abilities at creativity, which will also be represented by the beings that follow the human being. Do you see the picture of how all of that fits together? Yes. It's taking you a little bit away from your primal screaming past. <laughs> it sounds so infantile now, my... Yeah, but you can still hug child. trees, that's okay. <laughs> They like to be hugged. It's not infantile, it's a process. You start with that. If you're a spiritual seeker, you don't just start saying Om and sit there in Padmasana. You start with exploring maybe your sexuality because you, you know, in the culture you come from, that's allowed, it's possible. So you take that route and you approach spirituality more from an emotional, sexual aspect and approach and gradually you move from that into a bhakti state, which is the elevated form of the emotional state. It's the elevated form of all of those other things and then you go into devotion. The same thing is when you're thinking, you're thinking about spirituality, you're reading books, you're doing spiritual tourism and so on, in the conceptual, and at one point it sort of crystallizes itself into a deeper understanding, into jnana, you know. So that's what is happening, same with the body. In the beginning you're just doing nonsense with the body and then at one point as you become more aware, more in surrender, your body starts to become more contoured, more present, more alive, you know. So that's why it's not infantile, but it's past tense. Because attempting to connect spiritual experience with sexual experience is a... it's like trying to connect two opposite ends of a spectrum. If you do that, there's no spectrum anymore. So, I'm not... I'm not reducing your experience in any way. I think it's important, but it's a stepping stone that whole world of sexuality. For example, they talk about tantric sexuality and, you know, there's no such thing. There's no such thing as tantric sexuality. That's ridiculous. It's like... There is... There is an attempt to increase the... the communicative power of sex. That, yes, that's different. But that's not... It's like putting two words together that don't have anything to do with each other. There has never been anything like that in the Indian subcontinent, for sure. So, you know, tantric sexuality. In the tantra practices, the system is strengthened and trained to be able to hold its own and its strengths in a sexual encounter. That is why that sexual encounter is undertaken in the first place, to see how far are you able to stay untouched, unshaken by any kind of environmental input in that realm. Mm. 